Oh, okay. Oh, I, I did. Where's my hand? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, development of the budget, the presentation of the budget, the the budget priorities. So you have All like the one on one meetings and yes, get them to see things your way. Uh, <laughs> and all legislation that's introduced, we have to assess the impact of that legislation upon the judiciary. Oh wow! And then if I think there are problems, I will go over and meet with the sponsor of the bill and express my concerns. Um, but by virtue of the Constitution, I am the administrative head of the judicial branch of government. And so, I mean, I spent a tremendous time <coughs> with the General Assembly. Mm. Tremendous amount of time with the General Assembly. Wow. Yeah. Now, We're ready. Are ready. you ready? Sure. Okay. I'm, I'm, do you know, is Virginia's Supreme Court the oldest in the country? We, yes, we believe we are. We trace our origins back to 1606 in the Virginia Colonies Charter. There was a provision for a court system and we trace our origins to that court system. What do you see as the significance of this 225th anniversary? Uh, it is a celebration of the rule of law and the unique role of the judiciary in our society. Uh, too often citizens forget or overlook the fact that the judiciary is a very, not only a very powerful symbol in America, but the judiciary is the branch of government that is entrusted with the responsibility of the protection and preservation of our liberties, our property rights, and our constitutional rights. And in that respect, the role of the judiciary is critical to the preservation of our democratic form of government. And you say that you also participate um, during the General Assembly session. Yes. What is your responsibility as far as dealing with that side of government? Well. <coughs> I enjoy working with the General Assembly very much. As the Chief Justice, uh, I am the administrative head of the judicial branch of government. Uh, in that respect, <coughs> it is my responsibility to ensure that our courts are adequately funded. Uh, we submit a budget to the governor, and the budget, of course, is subject to the approval uh, of the General Assembly. Uh, I spend a lot of time with the leadership <coughs> at the General Assembly uh, seeking the necessary funds for the operation of the judicial branch of government. Additionally, many bills are introduced each year and sometimes we request uh, that various legislator legislators introduce bills and those bills are designed to improve the efficient administration of justice in the Commonwealth. Additionally, sometimes bills are introduced uh, which <coughs> we think may cause problems and in that respect, <coughs> I will meet with the legislators and try to identify those problems. Now, we're going to be over here um, <coughs> videotaping your ceremony uh, coming up on Thursday. What will your role be in this? And can you give us a little maybe preview of what some of your comments might be? <laughs> <laughs> yes. The, um, on August 30, 1779, the Supreme Court convened for the first time in Williamsburg. Uh, the court actually traces <coughs> its origins to the Virginia Colonies Charter in 1606. Uh, and that charter provided for uh, the beginnings of a judicial system uh, that would adjudicate disputes <coughs> in the New World. Uh, Virginia's judiciary is the oldest judiciary in the English-speaking world uh, <coughs> on this continent. Uh, the Supreme Court of Virginia was founded uh, <coughs> in 1779. Uh, Virginia's first constitution provided for the creation of a Supreme Court. And Virginia's first constitution and Bill of Rights enumerated uh, numerous constitutional protections that we now take for granted, but yet they remain very important. For example, the right to confront your accuser, uh, the right to a jury, the right to a speedy trial, all of those rights were initiated and enumerated in uh, our first Bill of Rights and our first Constitution and those rights uh, <coughs> have survived uh, <coughs> for over 200 years. With all the history in this state and, and because we seem to be the, the first in a lot of areas or the oldest or, or whatever, does that make your 
uh, position to you even more significant? Well, it makes our state and our judiciary special, I believe, um, because we, uh, the U United States Supreme Court was patterned uh, after the Supreme Court of Virginia. Uh, interestingly, <coughs> uh, we talk about separation of powers. In Virginia's first constitution, <coughs> the separation of the various branches of government uh, was clearly enumerated. Also, <coughs> we talk about uh, the right of a court to review the constitutionality uh, of certain acts passed by the legislature. Uh, <coughs> the very first case that discussed that concept was a case issued by the Supreme Court of Virginia. And so in that respect, uh, when one looks at the history of Virginia, when one looks at the history of the Supreme Court of Virginia, uh, one looks at the history and the development of the law in the United States of America. And so, uh, yes, our court is special. Now, you, how long do you serve as Chief Justice, and is it a one t term? No, the Chief Justice is elected uh, by his or her peers on the Supreme Court, and I, we serve for a term of four years. And <clears throat> the court, if it so desires, uh, may e re-elect a Chief Justice. One time? As many times as the court so desires. Is there any limit on how long you can be on the Supreme Court? Uh, there is a mandatory retirement age, and that age is 70. <clears throat> and so justices are required to step aside once the justice reaches the age of 70. So you have a few years left. Yes, I have about <laughs> two or three years left. Yeah. <laughs> um, let's see. You are going on two years now. Sorry we missed your one year anniversary, <laughs> but you're going on two years now as, as, as Chief Justice. Has that position been, I know you were already on the, the court, but has that position been what, what you thought it was going to be? It is a very challenging and time consuming responsibility. It is a very humbling responsibility, uh, but it is an excellent opportunity because it has afforded me uh, numerous ways to serve the citizens of this Commonwealth. Uh, for example, working with other judges around the state and with the Virginia State Bar, the Virginia Bar Association, and the Virginia Trial Lawyers Association, we have implemented a program and currently it's a pilot program called Virginia's Lawyers Helping Families. Uh, as you know, there are many, many people who simply lack the financial resources to hire a lawyer. Uh, we were concerned because in the areas of domestic relations, particularly child custody and child visitation, uh, <clears throat> we were concerned because people, certain people, simply could not afford a lawyer. Uh, however, uh, there are few decisions that a court will make that are more important than the determination of which parent raises a child. And so to assist poor people in this area, uh, we have embarked upon a program in which lawyers around the state will volunteer their time uh, to help these people, to represent these people at no charge. Mm. And that's, that's simply one of many programs that we have put in place to improve the administration of justice in Virginia. Are there any particular cases since you've been Chief Justice or even since you've been on the court that have maybe had a big impact on the lives of Virginians? I think most of the cases that we decide uh, impact Virginians. Uh, for example, um, we, we decide cases that affect uh, the rights and powers of government uh, and how government can use those rights or exercise those powers with respect to uh, zoning property, if you will. Um, <clears throat> but most cases that we decide uh, affect the lives of everyday Virginians. Are there any cases, or what are the most difficult cases for you? Would it be death penalty? The most difficult cases that I have encountered uh, usually involve uh, cases uh, where an individual has been sentenced to death. Uh, they, uh, another class of difficult cases involve 
uh, cases involving the liberty of, of children. Um, children are precious and uh, uh, when a child enters the juvenile justice process, uh, the outcome of that process uh, can undoubtedly shape and alter that child's entire future. And it's very important that uh, courts make the right decisions. Uh, as an appellate court judge, uh, it is not my job to second guess certain decisions that the circuit court, court judges make and decisions that the judges on the Court of Appeals make. Uh, but at the same time, uh, it is our job to determine uh, what the law is and whether those courts have adhered to the law as articulated uh, either in statutes by the General Assembly or in prior case law handed down by the Supreme Court of Virginia. In this role, in the role that you're in right now, have you had the opportunity to speak to kids? Because I know you have an interest oh, in yes. that area. What, what, do you, what's, what do you try to get across to them? Well, last week I spoke with kids who were in kindergarten through the fifth grade at my former elementary school, the Bowling Park Elementary School in Norfolk. And this was a very good day for those kids because they were being honored for their academic excellence as well as um, perfect attendance. And uh, <clears throat> I tried to encourage kids to do their best. Uh, I tried to encourage kids to understand the importance of education and how it will affect their lives. Uh, and I try to encourage kids um, to utilize the gifts that God has bestowed upon them. That is just so, so important. All of us have gifts, and it's incumbent upon us to make good decisions. Uh, I also encourage kids to be very careful in the choices of their friends because uh, as adults, you know, we understand peer pressure. And as adults, from time to time, we too are subjected to peer pressure. Kids are also subjected to peer pressure. Uh, hopefully, if kids make good choices in terms of the selection of their friends, the types of pressures to which they will be exposed uh, will not lead them into harm's way. I just have one other question. How would you most like to distinguish yourself as Chief Justice? Uh, <clears throat> I would like to be viewed as a chief justice who gave of himself to better serve the citizens of this commonwealth. Uh, I believe very strongly that as judges, uh, we are public servants. Uh, even though uh, society accords to us a high degree of respect and responsibility, it is incumbent upon us as judges uh, to remember that uh, we are public servants and it is, it is our job to ensure that justice is dispensed fairly and uniformly to the citizens of this commonwealth. And so I would like to be viewed as uh, a lawyer who was blessed and who became a judge who in turn dedicated his life to the service of others, his fellow Virginians. Okay. Great. That's great. All right. And have your own children lived up to your expectations? <laughs> <laughs> for the most part. Yeah. For the most part. It'd be tough. Now, with coming along in, in, as you did, I mean, when you were a child yourself, did you know that you wanted to be a lawyer? And you